Hey, everybody, we love that you're with us and that you're listening to this. And if you want more of Jen Stone, David DeLuise on Wizards of Waverly Pod, then you should follow us on Apple, Spotify, or anywhere you listen to your podcasts. Enjoy the episode. <sighs> that was so magical. <laughs> And intro music down, and welcome to another episode of Wizards of Waverly Pod. And we are here with two very special people that we haven't seen in far too long. Um, Ezra Weiss and Darren Butters are amazing for yeah! all of us. Come on, everybody, make some noise. Let's hear it. Come on, make yeah. some noise, candy, everybody. Candy, candy. Candy. So, so the reason, so, yeah, go please. No, I was going to say that Ezra and Darren were working for us. They did many things on the show, yeah. but their primary thing was doing warm up, yeah. which is when the audience comes in. They're they're there. What is it? Fifty, hundred people. It's almost two hundred people. And yeah. you almost have to bring yeah. them through, explain to them certain things, and entertain them for hours and hours yeah. and hours. It's a hard job. And I just want to take this moment and say thank you for being you and being a part of Wizards. And my first question, if I may, how did you meet each other, and then how did it become that you became part of Wizards? Peter Marietta, who you've talked about many times. I figured that was, that's usually the common link that brings us all together. Yeah. Uh, he had a theater with his wife called Bang Comedy Theater. Which was on uh, Fairfax. Fairfax, yeah. just up from the Grove. And, mm -hmm. ju well, for us it was, the Grove wasn't there when we Canters. started. From it Canters, Canters. Canters, sorry. Just right. south of Itapita and north <laughs> of Canters. Um, the and Bang it was Theater, right? Bang Comedy yeah. Theater, and it was a really phenomenal place i mean it was a small storefront theater um and they that did really second focused. city stuff it, right there yeah. and uh both uh peter and eliza uh were bringing their knowledge from second city uh to that and uh we both were students there and uh fast friends yeah immediately yeah. friends yeah, yeah. We, what was it just, that you love about each other? Uh, like, what was we, the thing that you... Well, we both are not from minute. Los you Angeles. You met at the Bang Theater with Peter Marietta. Yeah. You didn't yeah. know each other before. That was the catalyst. That was it, yeah. Awesome. So I I, uh, I was working with one of uh, Darren's past relationships, and I saw flyers. It's, Wasn't that political? Well, well yeah, said. Yeah, that, that was well quite said. Right. That. Great. Um, and I saw flyers for the shows that she would be performing in, and I was mm -hmm. like, you know, I wanted to branch out into new communities as well. I wanted yeah. to meet new people and new artists and perform. And I also wanted to put myself in that student place again sure. where I can learn. Even though improv was something I felt I had done a lot of mm -hmm. and I had taught and performed plenty, I'm like, if I don't allow myself to go through like a structure as a student again, I'm not gonna meet new people. Because it's True. opportunities just aren't going to happen. You have to find new environments. Yeah. As if I couldn't love you more. Oh, <laughs> you're sweet. So um, I love you tons. So uh, there I was. Darren was there to support um, his primary partner at the time. Right. And uh, he thought I was funny because he got to see me on stage. And I liked that he thought I was funny. <laughs> yeah. Um, and he was really funny. Um, but the real thing that really unified us, sorry, the thing that unified us was we're both not from Los Angeles. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Uh, I'm from New Jersey. Darren's from Nebraska. Yeah. Not a lot of showbiz in no. Nebraska. And we're like. But a lot of improv, weirdly. Well, yeah. Yeah. A lot, well, we have, we, we, we have this. We were both probably, I don't, I don't know your high school life, but I was definitely involved in theater and yeah. in comedy and in making skits and just being silly. Like. I was not a genius student, but I was a well-liked. Ezra, uh, you have a wonderful energy, and you're outgoing, and you're funny, and you have high energy, which is wonderful. Were you like that as a kid? Yeah, I was very hyper. In class, I would get kicked out into the hallway a lot because I would be a distraction. I'm also the youngest in my family. Mm -hmm. I'm the youngest of the entire generation, so whatever it was that I would do, people found that to be entertaining as you would find a small child to make up magic tricks or right. tell silly jokes. So uh, yeah, I was very hyperactive. I'm sure that I would be diagnosed with ADHD, hyperactivity, all of that yeah. stuff. And so we meet at the big, the Bank Theater. Right. Peter Marriott is there, and he's like, "Did you guys work on Greetings from Tucson?" Yeah, that's where we started. That, ah, okay. Yeah. So Peter was like, "You guys come in here and warm up this audience and do your thing." And 
And uh, greetings from Tucson, for people who don't know, that was a show uh, that Peter Marietta created, mm -hmm. yeah. which uh, with a studio audience that you mm -hmm. guys came in. Yeah. Where was that shot? Which studio was it shot yeah. in? Yeah. Oh, I don't remember. Yeah. But I do remember that, um, I mean, Bang was, uh, and still is, a really tight family of friends that have known each other through learning and supporting and performing together. Yeah. So it was a tremendous deal when Peter was like, I got my own show, it's yeah. on the WB. Yeah. We were like, wow, this is incredible. We can't and believe it, we're so proud of you. We went to his show to support yeah, him. Yeah. yeah. And we watched their warm up guy. Uh, it, it was something new to us. Yeah. So we were watching this person uh, who was a stand-up comedian yeah. run out of material after yeah. an hour and a half. Right. Yeah. And keep getting interrupted by the bell or, uh, you so know, wait, his timing. So wait, he was timing. just doing his stand-up? It was pretty and the much bell stand -up. means the bell for the audience who doesn't know when you're shooting in between uh, scenes, there's time where people are doing stuff. And then when the bell rings, it means we're about to film. So yeah. whatever's so happening in the audience stop. has to stop so that they can... Yeah. But that show. was something that I loved about you guys is because you didn't make it about yourself, which I feel like a lot of times comedians can be very like self -serving. No, truly. It was intentional. Like we've yeah. had, yeah. Yeah. we had meetings with each other. Yeah. We would like rehearse and talk about things. Yeah. Everything is improv based with the audience warm up for us. Yes. So, and by the way, David, what you just did explaining the bell is exactly what Darren and I would do to an audience yeah. that would come to watch well, your show. Right. Why don't we, yeah. so for someone who's never, so for someone from Nebraska who's never been to a like live studio audience taping, break it down. Like what, what is it that you guys do? What is it like the kind of games you would play? It's incredibly yeah. intimidating from our point of view. And I for bet. me, I don't know how Darren felt internally, but for me, it would be such, a, it would rack my nerves every mm. single time. I would be so happy when I saw him, yeah. which when Peter asked us to do the show, I was like, Darren, I want you to do this. Cause he had asked me, he's like, just go ahead and host. Cause he sees me host shows yeah. at Bang. Mm -hmm. And I was like, uh, I'm not a stand up comedian. Yeah. I don't do stand up work. Um, and as I said, I, I'll do it cause I'm a yes and guy, which are the rules of improv. improv. Yeah. Yeah. But I did not want to do it alone because it's always about support your partner as well. So which I was is like, wonderful for life. The which yes is and. wonderful yeah. for life, exactly. Yeah. And Darren is someone who I, on stage, I just trust. He's so smart. He's so grounded. Yeah. He's an incredible really listener. It's true. So that I, and I'm not, I'm all over the place. I do way too much. I step and steamroll <laughs> over everything because I'm like, it's me, it's me, it's me. But and I feel like you guys balanced each other We're out really well. We yeah. did, yeah. yeah. And I grew up uh, doing magic and ventriloquy. I was that yeah. kid in class. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, oh, birthday parties, Boy Scout uh, meetings and church groups and stuff like that. Yeah. So I grew up in front of an audience and learned how to command an audience at a, at a young age and then moved to LA to do animation. And then when, when you asked, it scared the hell out of me because it's, it's babysitting 200 people for strangers and kids. for four hours. And yeah. Strangers and that don't like each other, don't know each other, yeah. and, and don't want to laugh yet. And they don't, and when we started, they didn't know Wizards. I was Wizards. about to say. We shot the entire first season in the hole, meaning no one had seen the show or knew what it was. So you'd have to, you know, give them all the information so that they were aware of the setup. And they were on board. Yeah. yeah. We basically said, to that first season audience, because second season it was like, forget about right. it. I mean, it was <laughs> full blazes. Everybody was there to we see you guys. We didn't have to explain anything. It's a huge hit. We, they, we almost had to get out of the way a lot of the time or just kind of control the environment. Hmm. But that first season we were like, all right, we need to just entertain these people. They need to be alive. They need to be laughing. Yeah. They need to be engaged and watching. And we made the show more about the personalities and the actors there engaging with them. Because if we were sitting in the audience from Nebraska and New Jersey, yeah. we would want the special TV sure. show yeah. to recognize us and feel like we're a part of the night with oh, them. Of course, yeah. And that's what we did a lot of for that first season in particular. Yeah, yeah. and you guys, like I said, you really nailed it because that was something I had been to like live studio audience tapings just as an audience member before. And you guys really included the audience and made them feel like part of the show, which yeah. I think was so special. What were some of like the favorite games or encounters that you guys remember? I know it was like a million years ago. But no, no, we remember them very, I mean, oh, yeah. I remember them. Well. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. We would do, well, 
it eventually evolved to making the night about our audience. Mm. This yeah. is their special night. Yeah. You get to see this incredibly popular show with some of your favorite Disney stars or David DeLuise <laughs> as well, because let's face it, David's coming <laughs> off at 21 Jump Street. Yeah. People know David DeLuise, yeah. so they were super excited to see him there as well. But you guys had a popularity all on your own. The parents were like, oh, David DeLuise, look at that, yeah. right? And the kids were just gaga for all of you guys in yeah. the cast. Yeah. Um, so it, we would say, yeah. I, I was going to say, in season one, after the show, after the curtain call, uh, I remember like Selena coming up over the yeah. railing, like, anybody want an autograph? <laughs> because everyone was just like, Did you guys show? have fun Bye. tonight? Show. Was it a great yeah. night? Yeah, I remember. Thanks the, for coming. <clears throat> the, yeah, the it that, felt like very like <clears throat> like door to door salesman. Of like, did you like what we yeah. did? Yeah, I mean, it was new and you didn't know, yeah. right? So right. you're like, you want some feedback yeah, that sure. might tell you like, do we have something on our yeah. hands? Yeah, yeah. yeah. and, and uh, I've, I've said this before, but the way that Selena dealt with the fans was very unique. She was very, um, thankful rather it wasn't hey hi i'm here it was like thank you guys so yeah. much she's still that was, way yeah which she's is amazing still so warm yeah. and like and something thankful. that i don't think everybody knows and something i didn't think was going to continue was the entire audience yeah would come down to the floor which is the set which is in mm -hmm. between the audience and the 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 set yeah the audience and, was up in bleachers so to come down onto right. the floor they just had to go down and like we half would the take pictures with everyone yeah sign autographs and i was like in my mind i was like oh in next season this is never gonna happen <laughs> yeah. every like, oh, episode we, we shot we yeah. well, signed autographs and took pictures with I think all the fans since wizards and you know but between wizards and the world shutting down with the pandemic yeah all of the shows that were disney channel shows or it's a laugh shows they saw what was happening and they saw how incredibly powerful that engagement was yeah. with oh. the audience and the cast that they for other shows like jesse or yeah. for austin and ally they would have like a full setup they had a whole routine yeah. people would line up they would bring out the director chairs yeah. I mean, it was and a whole system. Because Wizards, it but was you a little a, chaotic. It was like, a chaotic, but because it was learning. Yeah, we were. Yeah. we'd never really done it before. We just knew that we wanted to have that interaction with them after the fact, especially after the first season where, like you were saying, we didn't know a gauge of if they enjoyed it, if they didn't. But you asked about some of the games. Right. Yeah. yeah. So some of the, en the engagement was, all right, everybody in the audience, tonight's your night. We've gotten a great DJ up in the booth, so let's go yeah. ahead and what are the songs you all want to hear? Yes. Right. So we packed it up, and most of those songs were also coming from the cast mm -hmm. because we wanted you to hear the music that also got you excited. Yeah. yeah. Um, so that was one of the ways to break the ice, And for sure. tonight, we're going to have a talent show. Every time. So who in the audience has something that. special that yeah. they want to show us? Yeah. And then maybe the cast will see it. Yeah, we we'll be like, and then who knows? And then you could be on the show <laughs> here. <laughs> get your own show. Yeah. And of course, the parents like, get down there and see it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So we would do that. But again, I mean, that goes back to the question that you had asked us earlier, which was like, was I like that as a kid? And yeah. putting shows up in front of your friends and family, oh, yeah. that's what we do. So I, Darren and I would be nothing but supportive to those young kids that would just do a split or would yeah. do a karate chop that was silly. <laughs> yeah. And we'd be like, that's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Because Get that's how yeah. we were raised yeah. to think that the stupidest things that we're doing were incredible, which totally boosted our confidence yeah. in life. Probably too much. For sure, <laughs> for but sure. It, but it allowed you to get to a place where you can fail and then try again and, and, and finesse yeah. yes. your talent. And one you know? thing we did not ever do, which we saw a lot of when we would see audience warm up, is we wouldn't put the audience down or make fun yeah, of anybody. A weird and that's thing. a lot of stuff with yeah. stand up comedy. Yeah. When yeah, you're doing where it's like a negative. When you're doing crowd you're trying work. Trying to roast them. Yeah, you're yeah. you're you know, you're making fun of someone yeah. or you know, that yeah. kind of thing. Yeah. You guys are the hired clown and just keep people having a good time till Which the is cake so is cut silly and then because go. Because on tape nights, like even nights where we were tired or like if Selena and I had been banking hours during the day or whatever and we were just kind of like Meh. you guys lived to the energy of the entire yeah, right. room banking yeah. hours is for school since that's right yeah. minors yeah. I'm just exactly. doing a David <laughs> Deloitte yes everybody. I yeah. love it yeah, yeah. I don't want him to be the only one doing he carries a lot of that for <laughs> yes, the show yes. and he gets a lot of crap for it he does it. So, well, mostly from me yeah. because I'm an asshole yeah like uh, for yes. instance we would have to say hey you're gonna hear a bell it sounds like a school bell no alarms there it just means we have to to stop talking because the yeah. show's about this right now. Right, yeah. and there's certain, like, you can laugh. Like, we would have microphones above the audience 
and you mm-hmm. know they would record their laughter. Oh, Darren and I had know? a bit on that. What? We would have, we'd be like, okay, so look above you. You see those microphones? Those microphones are on. So we right. want to hear you laugh. So let me hear on the count of three, let me hear I your best that. laugh. So we do one, two, three, and we're like, ha, 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 ha. Like, that's great. Yeah. Now, we want your real laugh, genuine yeah. laughter, because the show's hilarious and everybody's so good and funny on it. But we don't want to hear you like doing any shout outs to your friends back yeah, home, yeah. like, <laughs> Long Beach. Yeah, none of that. <laughs> we, don't, we don't want any of that. Like, can't, can't do that. we would do stuff like that. And the microphones are pointed at your mouths to pick up your laughter. Yes. But if you're sitting above that, they're pointed right at your bottom. So, so you might want to hold in that it. Chipotle. Yeah, like, nice. stuff like that. Like we, yeah, and that's yeah. all stuff we improvise that we're like that worked. So we'll just do it again if we remember. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And if you threw out candy or something, don't open the wrappers right. while well, you're doing. Your that app. is something that I didn't expect in this uh, career was the crowd psychology part of it. Mm-hmm. The, um, that like sheep thing? Which Darren loves, by the way. <laughs> he loves, I do. I know, I do I'm too. so I do excited too. about this. Right? I, I went to jury duty one think? time and they said, know where the exits are because last week we had a fire alarm and nobody knew how to get out of this building. <laughs> and then I went to jury duty the very next year and they said the same thing. And I thought that is brilliant because you put your mo- you put yourself in the mind of the idiot who did it wrong. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah and yeah. so we would have a thing. Um, Wait. So we're in the audience <laughs> up in the bleachers, okay? Which you're very familiar with, but yeah. for the audience listening or watching, right? So it's raised platform, right. and it was about like six or seven feet tall, in. so that when you when when the actors would come and say good night at the end of the night. There, you would just see like just their faces by the audience's yeah. feet, yeah. right? And there was always um, like a protection things, bar. Though. Yeah, you would yeah. climb yeah. up on them. Um, but there was a a bar there, right? So it's like scaffolding yeah. in yeah. a way. So um, so now go ahead. So picture that, right? These bars, the scaffolding, and so, this massive yeah. frenzy Fans of an audience that want to come. Who've, we've stirred into a fervor. <laughs> yeah, and certainly like, during curtain call. Come on. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, all that. Uh, When they come out for curtain call, we need you to remain in front of your seats. Okay, do not come down here. Do Uh, not run down here. And do you remember what happened last week, Darren? Last week, a little girl got pushed into the railing. So sad, knocked out all of her front teeth. I was real. I mean, I mean, she's okay. We took care of her, but we don't want this. Never, never. never. (laughs) Nobody ever got hurt. Really? Nobody ever got hurt. But we didn't ever want that to happen. How how is she? How is she? You're like little Susie's fine. Oh, but hold on. One time. This is just a general story. It's not wizard specific. And it could have happened at the wizard's audience. I don't remember. Mm -hmm. But fans and parents were just absolutely crazy for some of these Disney shows, yours in particular. And one guy feigned that his kid was a make a wish kid. Do you remember that one? No, he lied. Yes, yes, to get down on the floor, to have like a personal interaction. Yeah. And all the production people were like, you yep. know, we know the Make a Wish people. This and you're is not, not. That's not oh, it. That's get them out so because they tell us, egregious. and we're like, you know, you, we get right. information yeah. as uh, as your warm up people from you. You'd say, hey, my mom's going to be here. She's right. going to sit here. Yeah. Hey, my parents are going to yeah, be here. Yeah. Says Jennifer, or you know, oh, the agents are blocked off. We have executives coming from Disney. Yeah. yeah. My mom came into the. I know my mom was there, but did yeah. she sit in the audience? Oh, she was oh, yes. one of our favorite uh, yes. people to and see. And your parents also. Oh, yeah. yeah. My parents were there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and I mean, Selena's Selena's mom was there. Yeah, uh, we. I mean, everybody, everybody's family. I was just there. have to say this because I'm going to regret it if I don't. But when you said about the the little girl and smash her teeth, yeah, I my youngest Dylan was lactose intolerant, couldn't have cheese, mm-hmm. so I'd say no cheese, and there'd always be cheese. Yeah. So then I changed it to uh, no cheese. My daughter's deathly allergic yeah, 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 yeah. to yeah, cheese. Yeah, yeah. No more cheese. That's exactly. Right. <laughs> no, true. Yeah. Heighten the stakes. Yeah, yeah. Right. not true, but you do that. they remember that. Do you remember Sweet Escape by like Gwen Stefani? Oh, God, come stop out? it. Because we yeah. said it yesterday. We heard it while we were at uh-huh. a place that was called, and we did this thematically for, for David Deloitte yeah. yeah. because we went to a place called the Bigfoot Lodge. Okay. Because yeah. we want to keep the Bigfoot Cafe alive. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yes. In the zeitgeist. Yes. yes. So we went to the Bigfoot Lodge and they were playing a game of bingo from songs from the 2000s. Oh. Great Escape came on, and David Henry, uh-huh. every time, he would just every call time. out to the audience, every time. and the audience was like, yeah. We're like, that's really cute, yeah. but it was a little I annoying. Can't, <laughs> no, it happened. 
every single time. But every, I cannot hear that song now without, I know. without hearing that. Yeah, yeah. 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 we heard it all the time. Yeah. So you, guys, you ruined it. No. <laughs> well, I mean, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I have fun. more. I have so many oh things God. in here. Yeah. I have so many things. What do you have? What are the show and tell? Listen, from what I understand, listening to your podcast. We did our research. Um, <laughs> and that's how we did all of your shows. We, I would read the script. I yeah. would look over and amazing. research who your you guest stars so were. Amazing. We would see like, we would always check to see which scenes were going to be filmed live. Yeah. Right. And then which ones were Pre just getting played like, back. On Friday, tape night, you do all the live stuff. But on Thursday, you would shoot things that had magic or stuff that you had to do. And then it would be played in yeah. order to the audience so that they so the knew what was going on. Yeah, we would have to explain... Uh, when he does this, they're going to add some Disney magic and it'll yeah. turn into what? But when you see it, you have to be like, whoa, yeah, you know, yeah. like you're which seeing is, it for the first which time. Which is a little bit of the like the power and the magic and the responsibility of our job. We had to make seeing s subpar production where green screens and just know. people looking weird, yeah. nothing. Right. Unfinished, unfinished production. Unfinished yeah, production. Well, good. there was some of it. We <laughs> talked about the chandelier. Yeah, 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 I heard it. So there, there is, so there was, a, we had to like build up some hype about that so that the audience would give the reaction yeah. that they wanted to capture right. for the audio. So, um, all right, so I know that other guests have, and I know you have, I had one of these I, wands I as well. Wand, yes. <laughs> but I have a real wand from the show. Oh my God. That was, this is a real one from the How show. How did you get that? It was given to me by um, <laughs> by Ken, who was your prop master, yes. and by Jill, yes. who Aww. was his. Uh, I mean, the two of them were paired. I don't know what right. her official title was, but I mean, she's also what prop. Episode? She's prop what master. is this from? This is so uh, I think fancy. it was one of their many wands that they had. I don't oh, think it was mm -hmm. used and, in and an episode. And all of the sequins are still on it? Yeah, yeah. That's oh impressive. I love even it. my like this some of my so outfits great. are falling David, apart. David, thank you for bringing oh my God. it. So I brought what? that. It's in Amazing. His it's bedazzled. Yes. Darren and I would to engage the audience and to keep them invested. And really one of the main jobs that that Peter responsibilities that Peter Marietta told us yeah. when he wanted us to be audience warm up for greeting from greetings from Tucson was please keep the audience there. Yeah. He says, our warm up guy, and they don't did. know our show. It's not on the air yet. Yeah. And this wasn't for wizards. They're like, they don't know our show yet. They're and the for audience, four hours. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes, sometimes an audience, you didn't have this because it was, show, it was a kid show. It was a kid show. Yeah. yeah. But, a uh, uh, like our, an adult on, on friends yeah. Yeah, we like about. two in the yeah. morning or something and they would hire an audience to come in from a halfway house mm. a rehabilitation place yeah. they would have a high school group come in they would pay the, and, and there'd be a fundraiser yeah. basically yeah. for those organizations but the and there are professional people who just sit there and, and laugh. laugh i did yeah. a show i directed something and there were five people because and this is why they do this they are hired laughers so even if there's no audience, we need that space. So I'm an actor and I'm making a joke and then I'm gonna go right into the next thing. But what you need is to leave that space. Yeah. So these laugher people mm -hmm. would come in and- And they and, know where to fit, it's music. So they yeah. know where yeah. those bits of right. rests are. And then are there's also canned laughter yeah. where sometimes they spice up uh, an, an audience or they'll shoot it without an audience and just add laughter. Yeah, and we yeah. would point that out during like our mm -hmm. intro stuff where like, look, the the whole microphone gag that we talked about, but we said, we'll, you will hear yourself if you are laughing, yeah. right? right? And no, Darren would hear episodes. us laughing <laughs> yeah. in all of your episodes. My, my wife had that. never been to see, she went to, our friend Marco came from Germany and he, they went to go see the Connors. Yeah. Mm. And uh, my wife had never seen, I mean, I've done so many yeah. sitcoms. She's never seen a sitcom, mm. you know? And so uh, Marco really wanted to hear himself. So he would laugh, <laughs> <laughs> like a certain way. And you can hear him. We yeah. watched the episode. You can mm -hmm. hear him Because people do think that it's all just canned laugh, especially yeah. for the Disney shows. Like, oh, it's all just canned laugh. It's all just canned laugh. And a lot of it after the pandemic, because there, have been, yeah, there haven't there been, been audiences audience. right. since. A lot of them are probably recycled quality laughter stolen from Wizards audiences that Absolutely. we made them laugh. Yeah, right. Yeah. Or it's yeah. just AI laughter. Right. Oh God, right. that's so. So creepy. to keep the audience there till the end, we would save the last half hour. Once you started oh, working yeah. on the last scene of the night, yeah. everything changed when we discovered raffle, raffle tickets. Because oh, every warm up person yeah. has Got some kind of shtick uh, to keep them going. To, yeah, they right? want to stay to see if they won the they shirt. They won the, the thing. thing, and, and we, people will do anything for a ticket. The ticket isn't even the prize. More yeah. psychology. The ticket is 
a chance at winning a prize. Yeah. 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 That's genius. Yeah. yeah. And they could win as many tickets as they wanted to. It's and like you know, we would right get the parents to, we're like, yeah. do you want to win a ticket for your kid? Come on down here. Yeah. Because people love yeah. to see the parents get involved too. Right. Yeah. You know what? We'll give you silly. two tickets if you come down. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> come on, give them some love. Yeah. So then oh at God. the end yeah. of the night, we would raffle off prizes and I brought some of the prizes that I never raffled off. I can't wait to see what it is. I mean, you know them. It's they gonna, are oh, oh yeah. a Wizards DVD. Oh yeah. my God, let me see that. And then he's the movie, and the movie it. that was shot yes. in Puerto Rico, yes. Yes. which Darren and I couldn't warm up because there was no audience for <laughs> well, that. Yeah, because and, and I mean, you could have just warmed up that Puerto Rico. Right, and I never, oh, I never wanted I to part with those. And I didn't, no, I didn't I see the movie you. because we didn't warm it up. So yeah. we I couldn't hear ourselves laugh. Why do you look like you don't have any teeth in this? Look at this. I love it. I'm, I'm on the poster, but no, I'm like, you're this I'm big like and you have no teeth. A, a half an inch. Speaking of poster, poster oh, production yeah. would yeah. give us posters to give away as prizes yeah, as well at the end of the night. Stuff. You would sign yeah. stuff like that. So they didn't put you on this poster, uh, but they have these two schmucky extras. I don't what? know what they're doing. <laughs> Why couldn't I be the schmucky person in the back? Look, I brought three they so to, that you have, have one the... and Jennifer has one Aww. and Darren and I have one, but we want you both to sign it just like yes. it's the end yes. of the show. Yes. We'll you do that what? later. Everything love that. is not as it oh my seems. God, that's I right. Can't. It says it on there. Yep. That's well, the theme song. Yeah. Uh, well, what? you guys were no. not just our warm-up guys. Those. You guys no. were in several episodes. Hold on, yeah. I have it written down. Um, Ezra, you were on the show four times in Supernatural, The Good, The Bad, and The Alex, and you both appeared together in Alex Russo, Matchmaker, and Wizards vs. Angels. So mm -hmm. I happen to have the script with me. Oh, oh, oh my God, this is the Mary Poppins bag of wizards. Well, you I, don't understand. Look, can we have a raffle yeah. for us it. on Wizards I, Pod? Yes. Let, yeah, let's get, get real for a second. Let's, let's put them in real hands. talk, Wizards, incredibly special uh, yeah. phase of my life. Incredibly mm -hmm. special. I. Used too. to keep, I know it is, and that's what this podcast is all about. Oops, yeah. and I love that. Um, and I love As that you're doing it. Out a it yellow keeps envelope. Up. I have a yellow envelope. Yeah. I have so many more props in here from your episodes. Oh my god. god! That might be just this a little face. bit. Oh my god! I don't know if you I remember this. I want to take that. a picture of these right now. So it's uh, uh, we'll take a picture and, and post it for yeah, those we'll, who are we'll listening. Yeah, we'll put it on our page. We would give out these yeah, uh, the little... production still photos. Um, are those actually signed? These are yeah. not. They were actually well, signed and then photocopy. Who's yeah. this little cutie? Oh, oh God. My. Jennifer that's, Stone. That's but this is when right this, is, so this, tiny. this one Look. Yeah. Uh, was was plastered all over Larry mm -hmm. Tate's office, yeah. Yeah. right? Yes, Larry Tate, which again is the kind of humor that Peter Marietta would bring with his writing room <laughs> right, right. because it speaks to the parents that right. are watching yeah. the show, That which is which what love. everyone would That's, say yeah. about Wizards. Yeah. Oh, it's a show I can watch with my kid because I find it funny too. Yeah. Right. That was exactly. something I was really proud of is like the Easter eggs that like the parents were included. I felt like a lot of shows, they were like, oh God, I got to put this on. But I was proud of the fact that Wizards was like a family show you could sit yeah. and watch yes. together. It was a little, really pretty everything clever. that that Ezra has taken out, we're we'll, take, we'll take pictures of. We got put them a, just a crew sheet of oh how wow. things work. Those are some names and people you may oh. want to invite for the show. Oh, Maybe wow. their emails are the same. Oh, and then crazy. they would give out these script yeah. episode Look, covers. These were the yeah. top prize. Yeah, yes. oh, so these are one of each of them Wait from minute, how you have Because I love the show. Because he's he's a hoarder. I love. No, I don't love the show. I love, of course I love the show, yeah. but that's not why I kept it. Yeah. I kept, I keep all of this because I loved what it was all about. Yes. Yeah. The yeah. environment we that we were a family. Yeah. 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 So that's why I keep, like, why do you, why do time. I have, you know, why am I keeping all these old photos? This was another prize. That yeah, the spell they would sell. Oh, It's just a notebook. God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is so amazing. Mm -hmm. oh, and now so I'm weird. almost done with my uh, prize bag. No, here. I like the show and tell. This. Everybody that's listening on Spotify or Apple is going to be so sad. They can't uh, see they'll it. have to just uh, they'll subscribe have to, go to, to YouTube Patreon. and watch. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Um, <laughs> we have Captain Bob Sherwood, which we yes. got as a crew present of a sweatshirt yeah. with Captain Bob We Bob talked Bob. about that. Yeah. Oh, you did Alex Russo Matchmaker. Nice. That's our episode. You guys were in the so that's our episode. What was the and who directed episode it? that you guys did? Uh, maybe. Who directed it? And in our behind the scenes photo, you're giving us direction as we're coming from the bleachers. So Alex Russo, matchmaker. Maker. <laughs> Alex Russo, matchmaker. There it is. Directed by David Delawise. Yay, the great David Delawise. Can you believe done. it? David Russo were, himself is directing tonight's David episode. Russo. Everybody give it up for David Delawise! Yeah! Oh my God, look at you! <laughs> <laughs> I can 
get up there too. I'm still and you up did. You came years up later. in the. Oh, actually, yeah. no. We had guy come up in the audience. Mm-hmm. Guy, who's your first AD, who uh-huh. you explained many times. And he was like, um, Ezra and Darren, uh, if it's not too much trouble, we'd like you to come down on set yeah. and be in the scene. And we were like, what? what? Really? Audience, do you think we should? <laughs> this and is like, a Hollywood yeah, moment. Like, yeah. we're going, we're, and then we were like, hey, everybody. And the we're teachers, in the set. Yeah. We had our microphones then, yeah. with us yeah. while, and we put them down, and then we would shoot the scene. Which oh was God. incredible because you and you were playing matchmaker, of course. Um, and and then as soon as it would like the bell would ring, we were like, "Okay, guys, how did we do?" Yeah. Oh, I can't believe this yeah. is so yeah. exciting that was for us. So crazy. Yeah, was so uh, I work, uh, I animate at Disney. Mm-hmm. I've been there for uh, yeah. the renaissance <laughs> of the CG. Yes, uh, uh, twenty-seven years. Yeah, that's so, amazing. Uh, hey, thank you, amazing. thank you. Uh, and I went from working uh, animating at Disney to warming up for Disney to acting on a Disney show all in one day. And oh it was, uh, yeah, it was a dream come Wait, true. That day was the first day that you started doing? No, 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 no. You were doing Yeah, it. right, I came from work Got it. to do what warm up and day. then uh, and then walked onto the set. Yeah. Do you and feel like being so a cool. performer helps you as an animator or do you feel like they don't really like commingle? Oh yeah, no, totally. Uh, uh, I teach improv at, uh, at Disney Studios, uh, at oh. the animation studios. And that mm. keeps, my fire going. Yeah. Uh, Give us just a snippet. So you're working animating, uh, uh-huh. let's say Frozen. What is that? What's a day of that? Like, is there a storyboard that comes down and then you're working on that? Are you doing story? Are you talking? Give us yeah, a little information. Yeah, we have story artists who draw a comic book of the of the scene or the, the sequence. And then uh, that comes to us with a uh, pre-recorded dialogue. They record the dialogue first, by the way. Uh, that's often a misconception that yeah. people come in and do. I think, and sometimes they yeah. record the dialogue like a year prior. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's kind of like a video game. You have a an action figure of Olaf in yeah. the computer, and then you pose him out, uh, save that pose, go a few more frames, make a new pose, and the computer kind of tries to yeah. in between everything, and then you finesse it. Like and- AI. Nope. Okay. No. Nope. He's like, don't you say yeah. that word. Uh, no, no. Are you concerned? It's what we fought for. Are you concerned about AI in this process and it it infiltrating the? Oh yeah. yeah. As much as actors yeah. are, yeah. you know, or the it, world it, is yeah, for that exactly. matter. Exactly. As, as much so. as like freaking T two and, and yeah, Skynet. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. yeah. And you've been nominated and won awards for this, correct? Uh, yes, the movies that I've worked on have won Oscars, and um, it's fucking yeah, amazing. It's, it's incredible. Uh, it's really kind of neat. Well, and it's not just you; you as well are like a, a incredibly, you know, skilled and and voiceover artist. I mean, you've done like tons of anime. You've done Power Rangers, which I, for me that was my first word. My brother is a big Power Rangers fan, so when I saw that, I was like, <laughs> "That's so cool." Yeah, Power Rangers was my first voiceover job. Was it really? Yes, which was a lot of improvisation. I bet. Yeah. There was um Saban, right? Saban, correct. Yeah. yeah. So there was um an outdoor theater show that I was doing. Um big lot of characters that I was playing multiple characters yeah. within that show. One of the producers from uh Power Rangers was there with his family watching yeah. it. Um, I also met my wife, Sabrina. She was in the audience because her stepmom yeah. of blessed memory directed that show. Wow, it was a big so day. It was the biggest day of no my kidding. life. It was the most significant, life changing. Yeah. It, it all just kind of like combines for me in just being a single day. Right, but I'm sure it was maybe one weekend here, one weekend but there. But still, it was still it all kind yeah, of it conflates like a, into one, in one experience, experience for me. Yeah. Yes. So I started doing voiceover, which led me to doing more and more different jobs with voiceover because people said, oh, here's a new guy. He's good with his voice. He's good with improvisation because with Power Rangers, you would see the stock footage from Japan and they would be fighting one another. And they were like, yeah, just, you know, chase the action, make some noise. It'd be like, <laughs> Which what a great ah, Power Ranger! Ah. Well, what a great outlet for all that energy. Like you talked about having as a kid, and still have to this day. I mean, you just go in there and like just be kind of schizophrenic in a booth by yourself. Yes, you know? yes, it was a lot of fun, and I was fast, and they thought I was funny. Which yeah. then, well, as are. we all know, if you're 
somewhat right. of a good person, skilled, and you also are funny a little bit, then people yeah. want to have you around or yeah. they'll sure. think kindly of you. Mm -hmm. So they kept bringing me back and then yeah. that led me to directing animation and yeah. directing different dubs of shows. What is the name yeah. of the show with the girl in the what Miraculous red Ladybug, the Miraculous yeah. Ladybug. Is which that is fun? A, which is on the Disney Channel and it's on Disney Plus. It's amazing. It's yeah. so much fun. So I have some friends at the Bigfoot Cafe, Amy's yeah. daughters, like to do anime and they they saw you in in uh, san diego at the comic-con right and just they were flipping out that i was going to be interviewing you today well, that's great I'll, ha I'll send them something there's miraculous something lady. about <laughs> there's some thank you yeah there's something about the anime fans hmm. the, the 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 determination, the 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 effort mm -hmm. that they put into their outfits, oh, yeah. and their their energies. Into oh, they're that. dedicated. It's phenomenal yes. how, how into it they are. I love know? what I love. It's 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 something that I'm really proud to be a part of, um, and it's something that I love to see because these are, let's just call them kids, right? Yeah. But they're all ages. But um, they are passionate and they're creative and they want to share something that they have a hyper fixation about. Yeah. And they want to be supported and in a safe space. And they are just an amazing community. Of and people. it's like they're, they're, they, you know, for me, I was on Stargate and there's a lot of Stargate conventions. Yeah. And these people come and it's not just about the show, it's about their community. socialization. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's community. Yeah. Exactly. Which is yeah. a beautiful thing, especially yeah. like coming as like, I think we all probably were somewhat kids that like to pretend and like to be, we're, we're not the status quo, stay in line kind of kid. And so I think yeah. we can all relate to that need of having a bigger community that's just as wacky and weird yeah. and out and there. Yeah. And, and have something yeah. to and look forward to and then to celebrate with yeah. people yeah. in yeah. a very yeah. big way. So. Is that what you're gonna say? No, I watched Ezra host a pageant at uh, one of the conventions oh, recently. Yeah. And Ezra is such a, such a great host and MC for I'm this. Not surprised. He knows all the characters and all of yeah. their lives and all of their relationships and was just uh the crowd appreciated that he knew right. everything yeah. about it. And uh you know, he's a fan favorite. I'm not so so you're so you're still warming them <laughs> up all these years later. Listening. I love that. <laughs> yeah. I, I just want to say when you were talking or what's the memorable story if someone says to you hey, what was it like working on wizard it's like what was a what was a great day who was fun to meet or what happened a bad thing or mm -hmm. tell me one of those stories that i went <clears throat> i'm such a sucker for acceptance yeah. um i love to be accceptured i i just do right i, I work you. really hard thank you very much david i accept you too um I'm on the I, fence. I like I'm on the fence. i get it I'll keep working. <laughs> um, and you know I like I to you. I like to build relationships. I like to maintain relationships. And it always felt like with wizards, especially the longer we were there, there were just more because everyone is just yeah. doing their job at first. Like yeah. it's in a way, it's a union factory job for everybody. The writers have got to write and they got to churn out content. The camera operators are doing their thing mm -hmm. and they all have like their own little communities. Yeah. And Darren and I kind of like to see what someone's doing we express our interest or fascination with the thing that they're doing and then they don't think of us as those warm-up guys yeah they start to see us as people they know that we're there for them we were there for for the for mike who is in charge of all yeah. of the audio to all of the camera crew to you know for crying out loud you know we would have so much fun at wardrobe and hair and yeah, makeup we would yeah. make videos so it felt for me, my most memorable experiences are the times when I felt like I could be myself, be creative and do things in your environment, yeah. right? In your workplace. Cause I kind of go into it thinking like, I really shouldn't be here. I know it's a privilege for me to be here. Don't mess it up. But then, you know, start to become a little bit more acclimated. Yeah. And Darren and I would be like, at the at, at rap parties, we're like, oh, we made the montage at the <laughs> end. We made the montage, we, you know. And we would like, so we'd always be sitting in the back because we always felt like, well, that's our place. Like, it's always to shine a light on on the cast, yeah. and then secondary, the crew. But we know the crew yeah. is first and foremost, and the cast gets to celebrate through all of their support. It's but it's always the cast, and then it's the crew, and then we're like back here, like, yeah, oh, we're here too, yeah. <laughs> it's so interesting to hear like you guys say that because I, to me, you guys were just a 
part of the family. Like I never thought of you guys as like back in like, oh yeah, the warm up guys, we don't talk to them. Like they, it just, yeah. I never made that disconnect. I, I think we felt that because you guys were working on a show all week yeah. and then we came in to watch it yeah. uh, uh, be presented. And I think that's that's kind of how we felt on the outside. Yeah, that was bit. not how I yeah. felt at all. I yeah, was always good. just excited to be like, oh, Dar Darren and yeah. Ezra are here. It's time to do the no. show. Yeah. Like, yeah. it was always associated with that fun energy. Up to the audience. Yeah. Another game that we played was that we didn't expect to be such a hit, but it carried us through hours and hours of keeping the audience oh, interested. Oh, my God, yes. It was called Guess What's in the Bag? Come on. <laughs> Guess what's, guess in, the what's in the bag, and you'll get a ticket. In the bag Even if you guess wrong, you get yeah. a ticket, and we got prize at the end of the night. So come was on, there anything make a in guess. the bag? There was cereal. There were cookies. There was Did you, like, uh, feel coffee it? cups. No, you couldn't feel no. it. Oh, okay. But that kept the audience entertained <laughs> for at because least two hours. Remember, like the age <laughs> yeah. range of your audience. Right. They are just. I just want to play. How can I participate? Yeah. And we came up with that game. Also to break the ice so we can be in the crowd with one yeah. another, right? Yeah. So that yeah. it's not just we're standing here in the front of the audience and you're there. We, if you don't want to get up and do a song or a talent blah, or blah, blah, karate blah, you chop. could just guess donuts. And, and that way you that can win a ticket. ticket. Yeah. We wanted to make it like fair for everybody. And we were trying to include all of those introverts, shy, yeah. right. maybe they're even from a foreign language and they're, you know, just not really confident about speaking English. Yeah, yeah. So we wanted everybody to be involved. And then towards the end of the night, we, while you were filming, we'd be like, here, take a ticket, here, yeah. take, a yeah. ticket, take a it ticket, take a ticket. Because we would see the kids that would be even too shy yeah. Yeah. to just make to a guess. guess. Right. Yeah. Oh, and we so were funny. both young dads during Wizards as well. Yeah. And it was so much fun for um, Sabrina, old, my wife, to come with kids? Sarah and Jacob. Then? Now they're, then? Yeah. They yeah. were uh, yeah, okay. five and five and seven. They were a little young yeah. though for that show. For and they love the candy uh, and they loved the show in the audience because, yeah. you know, oh, they yeah. they loved getting a ticket. They just wanted to keep getting more tickets. I mean, we had really young kids in, in your audience. So now yeah. they're 20, 21 five? and oh, 19. Jeez Louise. Oh, wow. mm -hmm. And how old are yours now? Uh, I have a daughter who is 14. 14. Yeah. yeah. Which, I mean, if you don't mind me, so she's really come into her own as a performer. You oh, must oh, be yeah. so proud. I yep. mean, um, Julia Butters is your daughter, mm -hmm. and she's worked with Tarantino and Spielberg at this point. And we are you very know. fortunate and very excited yeah. uh, about her. How is she trajectory. handling all that? I mean, that's oh, she's she's great. I mean, yeah. uh, I I feel like people are telling me how well adjusted she is, and that's good. how we are. We have seen because we do audience warm up for children's shows. We have seen some train wrecks. We've yeah. Seen, yeah. And We've Darren learned a bad lot parenting from yeah. watching. Decisions I bet. And, and some overexposure for kids. And my daughter is on, uh, she loves the stage right now God. and musicals. Yeah. And she's just being a kid right now. And so. that's, it's, it's all the parents, right? And it's all how much stock you put into something. Yeah. Right. So if you're not impressed, she's not going to be impressed. Absolutely. What's your and favorite musical right now? Oh, well, I mean, we watch musicals all the time. Yeah. Uh, Singing in the Rain oh. yeah, I mean, is probably her, her favorite. What's your favorite musical yeah. right now? Uh, pfft, that's very, very challenging. I've really been loving the Heathers musical right now. Mm. Okay. I know that's like a few years back mm. a little bit, but I'm just like now discovering it. And mm. I just love that movie and think yeah. they did a really great job with the musical. That and... Um, I love Hades Town. Me too. As well, that's Hades my Town answer is, for you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. As, as the newer, as the newer musicals, Hades Town like Hades, hits oh really hard Lord. for me. Oh my Lord! And and like the way they bring in sort of that New Orleans jazz uh -huh. and like mm -hmm. it's just so creative and and yeah, I, I just I'm so fascinated by that whole world. So I love that oh, she's yeah. getting into theater and she's learning that it's a an instant feedback. Yeah. Uh, uh, instead of on film where you're like, was that any good? Did anybody enjoy that? Yeah. Uh, much like the audience. I was about uh, to say, I was like, you guys audience. know all yeah. about that. So and we all so we all teach acting. You guys teach improv. What is something that you would say? And you know, and you you've got kids that are in, coming up in the industry and that kind of thing. What is the thing that you guys would recommend or wish somebody had told you guys because you guys have kind of tried a little bit of everything Ooh, that's in a good industry. question oh. so what is like some wisdom mm. that you wish someone had imparted on you i i tell you i was i'm fortunate i have received a lot of like wisdom yeah. advice encouragement mm -hmm. um our son recently auditioned for a musical in college yeah and Which that musical? was uh, it was um hold on it was putnam county spelling okay. bee yeah 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 um and it was his first time auditioning 
And he had a really positive experience with the auditioning process, mm -hmm. but he's not in the theater school. He's not in that department. Yeah. It was a brand new exposure of a new talent. Still to good the theater for him for Amazing. stepping out and just, Correct. you know. Correct. And, um, and Sabrina and I, uh, we were talking with our son Jacob about it. And we said, look, whatever happens, because he was in that flux between mm. the, you know, auditioning and callbacks and when are they going to put up the cast list? Yeah. That, and we're, oh, yes, it's like, bit. I really yeah. want it, but I don't know. My gut tells me maybe it's not going to happen. Yeah, but I, I want to really set myself up for disappointment. Right, and, yeah. right. And, uh, and we were both saying, look, what you've done was incredible. If you feel disappointed, be disappointed about it. If yeah. if it doesn't happen, right? I said, but also if it doesn't happen, don't just turn your back on it. No, find a way to get involved. Yeah, See most if, people don't get it right off the correct, bat, right? You know? but still show that department that you're still interested yeah. and you want to be involved. Let them see your face. Let them get to know you. Because if Darren and I didn't do that for warm up. We would never have been in David Deloise's episode of Alex Russo Matchmaker because <laughs> they were like, so wait funny. a minute, you guys, yeah. we see you. We, we love these are great parts yeah. for you. Let's you, so you just don't there's always more opportunities. Yes, and, yeah. yes, yes and, and experiences, yes. right? So I think that that is a lesson that I impart on a lot of people. Now, I feel like when opportunity comes, especially like for audience warm-up, I was scared shitless for it. I was mm -hmm. like, this is I don't know grow, what this though. is. This we is also a big this. responsibility. Yeah. This is Hollywood. This is television. Um, but I wanted to say yes to it, just yeah. like with voiceover work for Power Rangers. I'd yeah. never done a professional job, but I said yes to it. Now, there are parts in your life where you really should say no. I, and you figure that out later in life, yeah. right? Live but, and learn, live and learn. But yes, as and you're experiencing, <laughs> keep saying yes and figure out if this is a, uh, an experience that will, pro will propel you forward or if it's a learning experience right. yeah. and you realize Basing not that to do no that. on certain things you know yeah. what i mean like but but being scared to do something it does a good thing yes yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, most, yeah. My, you know i didn't i was terrified to open up a cafe but i was like okay and i did it and it happened it's happened it's a, right it's where you grow and you learn yeah yeah, yeah. Exactly. what about you darren the advice that i would give to somebody who is getting their kid into acting is that the audition is the end of it hmm that you tell your kid, mm -hmm. you don't tell your kid there's something on the other side of the audition. That's smart, yeah. You say, we're going in there, you're going to say those lines that you memorized, and then we're going to go for ice cream. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then if they call you back, you cool. say, hey, those people want to see you again. Yeah. You made friends. Yeah. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. uh, so that would be my no, Michael, I, Michael Keaton yeah. did it. And, to, to, uh, and Brian Cranston, they both were like, oh, yeah. As soon as I realized that my job was the audition, yeah. mm -hmm. that was it. Yeah. That was the job. And I got to act today. Yeah. yeah. And I got to do that. Yeah. And then you go on to something else. I mean, sometimes it's hard to be like, please, God, put me in that movie. You <laughs> yeah. Know? yeah. Uh, but, but I mean, I suffer that, from acceptance. That's a huge part of it, yeah. which is why auditioning is a really painful experience. Yeah. Well, it's but tough. I, I love that you're talking about teaching that right off the bat because I feel like that's something actors have to learn the hard way of like, okay, this result living where i'm yeah. going after a result rather than the journey and the path of getting yeah. there is so painful and makes it so much harder where oh. you know if you have the luxury of like not having to pay your bills with just acting or creating you know you get to just enjoy the art of it and mm -hmm. the act of it rather than the result yeah. right right so right. i love that you're like talking about setting up not for being focused on that end thing. yeah and but, for me which I've listened to a lot of Wizards of Waverly Pod. Oh, I do like you. the episodes. And Good, earlier on, I don't know if you've shared this as often, but earlier on when you would talk about when you would go into auditions or when you have a table read, you would talk about how internally you would struggle with your dyslexia oh, totally. yeah. because yeah. it's a huge, I mean, it's a huge burden to say the words right. And it's an, a tremendous embarrassment when you say them wrong. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and I remember you shared the story about your initial audition for it and you had said the cap. wrong yeah right instead of cape you said right. cap or something which is something that i would do all the time david i just want to let you know that it connected with me for you sharing that vulnerability mm -hmm. in in such an honest way because i always suffer from when it comes to reading out loud which is probably why i like to improvise mm -hmm. yeah because i don't have to like read out loud or something, right, right? Yeah. but um I struggle with the potential embarrassment of me saying a word that everyone else in the world knows should be said one way, but because I read it yeah. the wrong way, right. I assemble the sounds and the letters in a different combination. And then everyone's like, and in my mind, I'm like, he is so 
stupid. Like I'm so and hard on myself. And, that, and I connected critics. with you on that. And I really well, appreciate you sharing. Ezra, that. thank you for saying that. And and our words are very important. Like what we yeah. say to ourselves, I think manifests in that. And and I appreciate you saying that and being vulnerable and giving us that. And I'm I'm listen. I'm watching you on Instagram and your in your morning routine. <laughs> Let me ask you a question. Yeah. How many marathons have you run? It's a between forty six and. You're crazy 49. And you're Somewhere about to there. run crazy everybody. Person. What is your Instagram? Uh, it my, it's my name. It's E-Z-R-A-W-E-I-S-Z, which is not an easy name, by the no. way. It's got two Zs in it. But you have name anxiety. Darren and I have to call out everyone's name on the microphone. Oh, that's and true. And one of, one of your creators and executive producers, whose first name is Todd, don't go any further. Mm -hmm. His first name is Todd. He was in the, he had his family his come. whole family. Yeah. Whole family. Whole front family row. in the front row. They're all there. They're all very, to me, they felt very East Coast and I related yeah. to that, right? Mm -hmm. I am Jewish and I felt like they are Jewish as well because I just picked up on some certain signals <laughs> and I'm like, okay, I know these people. They feel like family in a way. Yeah. And this was early, early on, like maybe our second or third night doing warm up. Yeah. And there's a lot that we're processing in our head, especially during curtain call and curtain call. For those that don't know, it's the very last thing that we do on the microphone. We call out everybody in the cast. We start from the person yep. who was the day player who just came in that day, and we work all the way up to who I think Selena's name was the last name mm -hmm. to be called yeah. out as the star. But um, and then we have to mention the who wrote the episode, who directed the episode, There's a lot of names. and then we do our. Of course, we have to do our executive producers. And Todd, his last name is Greenwald, mm -hmm. and. I was like, and I'm d ridiculously dyslexic at times, David, especially when I'm overwhelmed and overstimulated. Sure, sure, and now I have sense. the pressure of this family is here and his mom, who was a little bit aggressive with her words, was pulling on me, I'm, I'm yanking on Darren's shirt, oh, was no. pulling on me like, are you gonna say my son's name? Uh, don't forget my son. Cause I got up to Selena and the director, right? And then yeah, what's yeah, yeah. for David Delaware, right? And then they're like, what about my son? I'm like, we're going to get, you'll see, you'll yeah, see. It's coming, it's right? coming. I said, and let's hear it for Peter Marietta. And let's hear it for Todd Greenberg. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, oh God. No. Oh, she, she put you on a list. And, and they all, oh, and I, I mean, I, I was Sweating embarrassed you. Yeah. as can be. Sweating. I'm like, I. I, I don't deserve to be back here ever again. I was talking him off the ledge uh, after the so show. Much I was like, I can't believe I said ever, Greenberg. Anybody else. I know, it. I could yeah. read that it. it says Greenwald. But I'm like, I know his name. I'm just gonna say it. I'm gonna say this yeah. family and not look at my paper. I'm gonna go, it's Todd Greenberg. <laughs> it's like you're you're really like prophecy. Your, yeah, like, don't mess it up, don't mess it up. Don't mess it up, don't mess it up, don't mess it up. I mean, it's a, it's a scar, right? Because I had like so much, I, I raised the stakes on the entire experience and yeah. the job. Yeah. And I was like, and he's the executive producer. And you know what's interesting about <laughs> those kinds of- He can fire me. The, yeah, but, but those experiences where you make the mistake mm -hmm. is where you learn that it is okay after. Yeah, yeah. and that you realize you it's not quite it, the monster you know? under the yeah. bed you made well, it out all to I be. have done is I like obsess about the name. I say yeah. it in my head before I yeah. say it on the mic. I, listen, I did an episode of ER. I had to say Dr. Rosgotra. Okay. Yeah. Now, bless you. God bless you. A, it was a single. It was a, it was a long oneer. It was a good five minute oneer. Yeah. And I was in the middle of it, and I went up like this. I was like, I'm not gonna fuck this up. Right. And I went like this. Self fulfilling hey, prophecy. Doctor Rose Gotra. I was. I just oh. was like. I, I just was like, say it, and then because I watch it, and I'm like, oh, I just so I made sure that I said it right. Okay, we've been. Come on, we, guys. Listen, my guys, pants yeah. are spitzing. I gotta go piss. Come on. I know. Love you so much for coming. I love and you thank so you for much. sharing your stories, your time, your lives with us, and we love you. And and yeah, I mean, just I I can't tell you how much fun I just had. Oh, good. Guys. I good, mean, good, good, good. So the, thank the crazy you. thing Pleasure. is, is fifteen plus, however many years later, you guys are still bringing up the energy in the room. And hey, hey. Like fuzzy, so. give it up for Jennifer and David. <laughs> 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 Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 We're